Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right. Oof. What a turnaround. I think this was at $2.38, $2.4 trillion 24 hours ago. And boom, we had a big old shakeout. And look, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in my personal opinion, never financial advice. That's all this was. This is just a good old fashioned shakeout. I don't think we go into a bear market from here. I think we could see some more downside. And I think there's a number of factors of why it happened. And we'll get to that shortly. But first, let's have a look. Bitcoin dominance jumped up above 41%. Uh, look at the volume though, come back in. 53% up because it dumped so hard and then people have been buying the dip. Okay, Bitcoin price down at 46,000 from sort of 53-ish thousand, 52,000. And even the gas prices have dropped uh, substantially. A lot of people in panic. And I mean, look, have a look at that. It's just basically, it's a bloodbath. Red pretty much everywhere. You know, there is a couple of outliers, but not too many. So let's have a look. Has anything done well in the last 24 hours considering what just happened? Well, there we go. Near protocol is up 30%. Harmony up 4%. Algorand up 3%. So there were a couple of movers. One particular uh, near protocol and then really not too many. But then we can see the stable coins are up a lot because that's people panicking and getting into stable coins. Whereas really now could be a really good time to buy if you had stable coins sitting on the side. I do have a little bit, but for me, I'm not really doing too much at the moment. Uh, I didn't even get to put my $30 in yesterday. Uh, I ended up falling asleep and forgetting to do it. So putting that $30 in now would probably be uh, a lot better. But look, a couple of hours ago, unfortunately, while I was asleep, uh, it would have been a whole lot better. But we can see not too many movers. All right, now is going to come the semi-scary part. What has fared the worst in the top 100 anyway, considering we are down 15.1%. That is a big, big move. Well, there you go. We're still dropping now. We're under 2.1 trillion. And I think we could go a little bit lower as well. Oh, Theta got brutalized. Filecoin, Atom, ICP, Tezos, Synthetics Network. Ouch, Theta Fuel, Chili's. I mean, you name it. Look, the graph. All the altcoins got just absolutely savaged because that's what happens when Bitcoin takes a really big dump, unfortunately. Uh, and that is the perils of being involved in the altcoins. So, you know, everyone wants to come to the altcoins to get all these great gains, but unfortunately a lot of people just aren't ready for the uh, big drops when Bitcoin starts to drop. Now, again, for me, I haven't panic sold anything. Uh, I don't think we're even remotely close uh, to the, well, I won't say that, but I don't think we're like that close to the bear market. I think we've still got another leg up. This is mainly a liquidation of all the longs. Too many people were getting too, too bullish and diving into all these altcoins, and they were just like, yep, we're going to the moon. And so the big players had a look and said, hey, if we short here, we'll probably make a lot of money. And then once they go short, they then just buy up all the cheap coins. And that is what's happened. We can tell by the volume. Again, 41%, uh, sorry, 42% uh, volume. Now, again, for me, I'm not so sure it's over. So let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart and see what happened. Look at that. And almost down perfectly to where I said I thought it could go, but I wasn't sure it was going to go there. It almost hit that target perfectly. So 42,000. So... I'm not sure this is over. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one is what I said. There was a lot of people who were just going long. Everyone was getting too super excited and like, yes, we're going to go to the moon. And don't get me wrong, even I was excited and I still am. I still think we've got a whole lot more upside to go. It's just not going to be that easy. Big institutions are here. Big players are here. People who don't want Bitcoin to go to the moon because it's going to ruin their old financial system and all the rest of it. They are actively trying to push the price down and scare as many people out as they can so they can buy up positions if they are buying up positions. Look, in all fairness, I think most traditional finance is getting into Bitcoin right now. They can see what's coming. Excuse me, but they are going to do everything they can, every trick in the book 
to keep it as low as they can for as long as they can to shake people out, particularly people using leverage, because that's what a lot of this is. This is market manipulation. The retail, we can't do this. We don't have enough Bitcoin unless we sort of all got together and coordinated. Who wants to sell Bitcoin at $52,000? I don't know anyone who does. I'm certainly not selling my Bitcoin at $52,000. I will consider selling some Bitcoin at about $90,000, $100,000. And that's all it is. Consider. I don't really want to sell my Bitcoin. My altcoins, different story. We'll have to wait and see. I like to take profits from them. I haven't taken any profits for a while, but that's because I still think we got the most explosive stuff to come. This wasn't it. It gets a lot more parabolic and a lot more silly in a blow off top. So this is straight up market manipulation. And now, again, it has to do with the people going long. They wanted to shake those people out. They have. Anyone who had more than a 5X long got liquidated. And anyone who went short made an absolute fortune. And most people were probably going long, I would say. Hence why I don't really do, well, not that I don't really do, I simply don't do leverage trading. I'm not sure I ever will. Every time I kind of think I wouldn't mind having a crack at it, I see something like this. And then I hear all the stories about the people who got liquidated and ruined and all the rest of it. Yeah, I'd rather just invest. I would like to buy now. Unfortunately, I don't really have a whole lot of money sitting on the side, at least not money that I am willing to deploy. Like my sort of cash reserve, what I have, and I don't have a whole lot, I'm literally holding that for the next bear market, whenever that is. Don't get me wrong, my DCAing, I'm more than happy to buy, but I just don't have money to DCA today. So unfortunately, I won't be buying this dip. Well, actually, that's not true. The $30 I was going to put in yesterday, I might put in today. Uh, and buy this dip. But knowing that, I think it still could go lower. I think it quite could, could quite possibly come down to around about 42, and maybe we have, have, and have a real big scary wick down to sort of 37, 38, just to really scare people out. But you got to remember, the people who are going short at the moment, they only have so much Bitcoin that they can use to force it to sell, to force it to go short, before they start to get into their you know their real stack if they're real hodlers and again i don't think there's too many people coming in buying bitcoin at you know maybe 50 48000 and then just simply trying to short it down to 42000 to not get back in the market to simply just make a few bucks that just won't pay off because in the end you'll have to continually buy bitcoin at higher higher prices there might be some companies doing that but i think it's big companies big players who've bought in at cheaper prices and then when they see everyone get too exuberant, they know to go short and they just do a big sell and take all that cash and buy back in uh, at a cheaper price. And that's the power that really big entities have and that's the game that they play. So you need to remember that. This is not just the retail. Retail cannot do this. I can tell you right now, this is total market manipulation. So if you bought up at 50 you know, why panic sell at 46, 47? Could it go lower? Absolutely. But have you done your research into cryptocurrencies, into Bitcoin? Have you seen the kind of gains that you can make if you simply hold for four years? If you have, why panic sell? And again, I never offer you financial advice. This is just my personal opinion. But if you've done that fundamental research and understand that, why would you, if you bought it, you know, 50, anything, you bought it really any price unless you bought it three thousand and you think you know what i'm going to take some profit at forty six thousand that is completely fair enough or you bought it twenty thousand or you bought it thirty thousand whatever then fair enough no one has ever lost money taking profits but if you're selling at a loss well then i just don't understand that again that makes me think that you don't understand number one bitcoin and number and then number two, if you don't understand Bitcoin, then you couldn't possibly understand cryptocurrencies because it's all based around that. And if you've looked at what Bitcoin's done over the last sort of 11, 12 years, you know, going on sort of 13 years, uh, yeah, why would you sell? It just doesn't make any sense. But that's what I mean. This is market manipulation. This is people who have got leveraged longs being liquidated. And now we can see a little bit of panic selling. Me, I'm not panic selling nothing. Like I said, I will consider selling some Bitcoin at 100,000, thereabouts, maybe 90,000, maybe a little bit over 100,000. But then again, 
at the same time, I just think, why? What's the point in selling it? Unless I'm hoping to time the market and buy in at a better price, which I might get right. I've done it a few times and got it right, but I've also done it a couple of times and got it wrong. So hence why generally I don't sell my Bitcoin. I will sell my altcoins at times and try and do some swing trades and things like that. But my Bitcoin generally, I just hold on to it and stack because it is the safest bet. And it is even safer than the stable coins. Stable coins seem like a safe bet, but we need to remember they are tied to fiat. They are essentially fiat. They're losing, I don't know, 15% of their buying power a year. So stable coins are only good in the short term. They're not good in the long term. What has been proven to be good in the long term? Bitcoin and some other cryptocurrencies. But really, outside of Bitcoin, you're sort of struggling. Ethereum so far, but look at the Ethereum gas prices. They're truly horrible. And we're not even at sort of peak craziness yet. And they're still truly horrible. So short of um, ETH 2.0, you know, rolling out successfully, Ethereum's still not a guaranteed long-term hold. Don't get me wrong, I haven't sold my Ethereum. I'm not panic selling. I like it, but it's not a finished product. Solana is a finished product and it's got a lot of money and things going there, but it still doesn't really have an ecosystem. They are building one, but it's still a promise. Oh, we've got this great product, awesome. And everyone's piling in. What can you do with it? Not a whole lot at the moment. So again, I'm not trying to FUD Solana. I, I want to get a position, but I'm just not buying into it right now. I think it's way too high. I'll wait for a really big corrective move in Solana and probably generally in the market before I try to buy into Solana. I'm just not going to buy into something uh, that has pumped so hard. Uh, and that's just me. You do you. I'm just letting you know where I am. I'll, I do like Solana. I want to get into it, but I'm just not going to do it at the moment. Uh, it just it would be no point uh, in my personal opinion. But again, that's what all I'm saying. This is total market manipulation. That is, this is not people simply capitulating and all wanting to take profit. <sighs> Too much bullishness. You know, the El Salvadorians finally came out and made it national uh, currency. And again, there's big companies, big players that can see what's happening, the adoption that's happening. And so they want to do everything they can to shake as many people as they possibly can out. Now, for me, I will probably, again, try and sort of swing trade and time the market with like maybe 20% of my Bitcoin. I'll be happy to just try. I've done it a few times and it's worked well. I've done a couple of times and it hasn't worked well. So, you know, sort of 50-50. But the rest of my Bitcoin, I just won't sell ever. I will never sell those Bitcoin because I want to hold them forever because I just know what is happening with this space. And once I sell them, I'll probably never get them back. And I truly believe at some stage, I think, you know, the interest I can sort of make and things like that from the crypto uh, currency things that I've invent, uh, invested in, including Bitcoin, will set me up for the rest of my life. Unfortunately, not enough now. Uh, I can't retire. I'm nowhere near being able to retire. But in five or 10 years time, excuse me, maybe not five, let's go more 10, I think I will be able to. I think I've made some wise investments. Again, I'll take some profits from certain altcoins, put them back into Bitcoin, but I won't be simply selling all of my altcoins unless I bought them simply just for a flip. And generally, I don't do that. I like to do a bit of research, look at the teams, look at you know the technology and what they're trying to do, and then I just make bets uh, on them. So I'm a long-term investor more than any kind of trader or swing trader, but I do do a bit of trading and definitely have a crack at swing trading on occasions. Like I showed you the charts the other day, you know, Matic was looking primed, Chainlink was looking primed, or oh, what else? I can't even remember what was looking primed now. There's a few ones. I think Aave, I showed you, looked pretty good. And what happened? Boom, this. And so that just made a mess of those. But in saying that, that just makes their charts now probably look even better there at an even better buying price. But again, that's never financial advice. That's just my personal opinion. Chainlink's a long-term buy for me, so that is probably something I'm going to put some money into when I get some. Uh, Aave is a long-term buy, so that's something I'll probably buy uh, and uh, take a long-term view on. The graph, I really like what the graph's doing. That chart was looking good. Matic was looking really good. Those charts are only looking even better now, so hence why. I'll put my little bit into Bitcoin, as I do. I'm always investing in Bitcoin. Unless it's really in crazy price discovery, then I'm just not. I'm looking to take 
uh, profits at those kind of stages. But again, I don't really sell Bitcoin. But at the moment, Bitcoin's looking like a good buy. If it is less than where it's been before, that's when I want to buy Bitcoin. And I want to put more uh, money into Bitcoin along with altcoins. But when it's in price discovery, so again, once I see Bitcoin at like you know, $80,000, $100,000, I'll, I'll still put money into it, but very little. I will be putting more into the altcoins because I know they're going to have a big explosion after that. But again, I'm even looking more to sort of take profits. So again, I'll move on. I'm taking up a bit too much time uh, going on, but this is market manipulation. I hope you haven't been uh, scared out of it simply by that move. That's all it is in my personal opinion. Right, $500 billion German asset manager considers adding Bitcoin to existing funds. $500 billion. Why would they do that if they thought the market was going to tank? We go back here. Why would they do that if they thought no, a bear market's coming and this is going down to 30,000, 40,000 or you know, 20,000, 10,000, 8,000, whatever price it is that they think's coming. Why would they start to consider adding Bitcoin if they thought that was coming? They wouldn't. They think it's going much higher and they are looking more long term. They're not thinking, all right, what's going to happen in the next eight months? What's going to happen in the next 12 months? Which is where a lot of people get caught up. If you think you're going to come to any form of investing, it doesn't matter what it is, and you're just going to chuck some money in and a week later you're going to be super rich, you got it all wrong. You're gambling. You're not investing. Investing is understanding what you're putting your money into, being able to have a look at charts and then work out, is this a good time? What's my time frame? Am I you know, looking for uh, how well it's going to do in the next six months or how well it's going to do in the next 10 years? If it's in the next six months, again, that sounds more like sort of gambling and a bit of swing trading. Uh, and again, I, I don't recommend trading for anyone. I think investing is easier. But that still means you've got to do some research. And again, if you're getting into Bitcoin even at all-time highs, as long as you're holding for long term, you're probably going to be fine and do quite all right. But there is no guarantees in life. Again, I definitely recommend being an investor rather than a trader and being able to understand how all of this works before you simply throw money in. But if you were to just throw money in, my personal opinion would be, you know, if you don't know anything else about crypto, Bitcoin's where you start. Once you can understand Bitcoin and how it all works and understand how the charts work and the cycles work and the cycles will break, they absolutely will break. We're going to move away from these four-year uh, cycles at some stage, or at least they will just slightly evolve. There's still always going to be four-year cycles. Every four years, Bitcoin gets halved and there's half as much being put out. That won't stop. But whether it moves the markets uh, as it has previously, I'm not sure it's going to be the same. I think there's going to be other factors that will change that. But again, these guys are ready to put in big amounts of money. And they're not putting in the $500 billion, don't get me wrong. They're only going to add, I think, 1% to 2% or something like that. Yeah, there we go. 1% to 2% of their portfolios. But they are looking at putting Bitcoin in there. They wouldn't be doing that if they didn't think it was going to go much higher. Much, much higher. Particularly if they're thinking at getting in at around 40000 They obviously think it's still going to go much higher. But they most likely also have a very long-term view. They're not looking, where's this going to be next year? Because if that's what they're looking at, then they'll probably sit on the sidelines and wait for it to go cheaper. But they're smart and they know it may go to 300,000 this cycle. And if it does, it's probably not coming back to 40,000. 40,000 would be cheap. And that is how you need to be. Like the smart money, look longer term, do some research, get some you know good information and then start to deploy money. Don't just simply chuck money in. Uh, and again, treat it like a casino and you're going to double your money in you know, 10 minutes. <laughs> Some people do, but not many. All right, Panama, they have now proposed to regulate Bitcoin as an alternative method, and they're doing more than just Bitcoin. It's going to be cryptocurrencies. Look, again, there is big players out there that can see what's coming, and they're going to do everything to shake you out. This is putting a knife in traditional cash, in traditional payments. All the big players, they really, really can see what's coming. They are all getting in and they are going to do everything they can to get as much Bitcoin as they can. That is how they will beat the regular Joe. 
they will trade with a very small amount of their Bitcoin, which is a large amount though. You put a, you know, like a micro strategy, uh, Tesla and that, you put a billion dollars into cryptocurrencies, you can probably afford to trade with a couple of hundred million because you got a billion dollars worth. And, a, you know, you trade with a couple of hundred million dollars worth of Bitcoin, you can really move the market. You and me, we put in, you know, depending on where you are, but, you know, here in Australia, you put in 50 bucks, a couple of hundred bucks, you're not moving the market, you're doing nothing. But what you can do is simply buy and hold. And based on history, you know, who knows where you're going to be in 10 years, but based on how Bitcoin's done, I'm guessing you're probably going to be a whole lot better off than where you are now putting your money into cash. I'm not saying there's not other good things out there that you could buy. Maybe there's some really good uh, company in a stock, you know, um, property and things like that, but nothing's outperformed Bitcoin. Absolutely nothing has outperformed Bitcoin in the long run. There's things that have done better in the short term, don't get me wrong, but in the long term, nothing's beaten Bitcoin. Absolutely nothing. There's nothing out there, period, that has done better than Bitcoin. Now, that doesn't mean other good things can't come after Bitcoin, but at the moment, it is your safest bet. For me, I buy Bitcoin. I don't plan on selling my Bitcoin again. There will be a very tiny amount, like maybe possibly up to 20%. I think that's even really pushing it. I'm thinking probably more 5 to 10% of my Bitcoin. I'll try and do a bit of swing trading with and all the rest of it, sell and buy back in and see how that works. But the majority of my Bitcoin, I will straight up never sell. And I mean that, never. There'll be nothing that will make me sell. I will hold on to it. I will take some profits on occasions and maybe, again, you know, look to get into things like Solana at a good price. I've missed that and I'm happy. Not happy, you know, I'm okay with having missed it because I've got on to lots of other good things. But I will hold my Bitcoin. I can't say that enough. That is my personal opinion. You know, this is the safest bet. All the altcoins, I've been in this space before, the ones that were, you know, right up the top in 2017, most of them aren't up the top anymore. It really is, they can they can be fads. So whatever altcoin you're in now, strongly consider taking profits at some stage because that coin may not be doing anywhere near as well as what it was years ago. Litecoin, perfect, perfect example. I love Litecoin. So when I got back into the space uh, last year after the crash in 2020, Got a position in Litecoin. Really hasn't done too much. Kyber Network. Loved Kyber Network back in the 2017, sort of 2018 uh, sort of run. Hasn't done anywhere near as good as what I thought it would. And I'm probably going to have to move those on. The only good thing about Kyber Network is the rewards that they pay are in ETH. So, you know, I may as well sort of just hold on to that because hopefully over time I'll make up, an ETH, make up enough ETH to uh, sort of you know, make it worth it. But yeah, unless something happens with Kyber Network, I'll, I'm, I haven't put any more money into Kyber Network and I'm not going to. I haven't put any more money into Litecoin and I'm not going to because sometimes things just, they're good for a minute and then they're not. And that, you know, it could be like that with, you know, look at Tezos. Oh, Tezos was on fire for all. Everyone was jumping into Tezos. It was going to be the next big thing. Where is it now? Hardly anything happening on it literally hardly any movement whatsoever i'm not saying nothing's happening on it so please are the tezos fans don't come out and try and rip me a new one but it's just died right off hardly anything is going on right now look how well uh, matic and polygon uh, did for a while there and now they're pretty quiet still plenty going on but price wise not much is happening and there is absolutely no guarantees that polygon is still going to be around come the next sort of bull market I think it will be. I'm pretty confident it will be. But I can tell you right now, I will be taking some profits <laughs> and I'm not simply going to sit on it thinking it's going to uh, be here in four or five years' time because I've seen a number of coins come and go. And most of them, unfortunately, have gone, whereas Bitcoin, Ethereum, they've really been the only two that I've seen that have really... St- sorry, Bitcoin, Ethereum and Chainlink. They're the only three coins from the last bull run that are still around and doing... Re- oh, Cardano. All right, four. There you go. But really, there's not too many. Most of the coins I was putting money into back in 2017, they're, they're almost gone. Neo, God, EOS. Oh, well, you know, there were so many others. So just keep that in mind. I'm moving on. I'm getting off on tangents. 
Right, Afterpay tells Senate inquiry crypto could slash merchant payments costs. After PayPal told the Australian Senate that using crypto could cut payments costs for merchants and that the government should work on uh, should work to create a framework for an Australian back stable Australian dollar back stable coin. I completely agree. I think again this is the future. This is where it's going. After pay great Australian company that's done really well uh, and I think they sold to PayPal or someone like that and the two owners made ridiculous amounts of money and I think one of them uh, is still involved in Afterpay but now again they just aren't the the owners of the of the space crypto's where it's at and I hope the Australian government gets on board and I hope that they again you know start investing in Bitcoin I really do I don't think they will unfortunately but it would be really good if they did uh, and started to use Bitcoin as a part of the Australian reserve you know just adding a tiny little bit if it's one two percent of the Australian uh, revenue just put into Bitcoin because you know yeah how can you not look at where it's gone in the last sort of 11 12 years and go now nah, I don't want to put any money into that that is ludicrous but it, you know it, it's hard to convince people of things sometimes particularly governments Right, SEC threatens to sue Coinbase over high interest crypto products. It's kind of dawned on me why BlockFi has suddenly reduced the amount of interest that they are paying because they are looking at the same thing. So the SEC said, if you have any interest things going, and particularly, you know, 4%, which is just outpricing banks and all the rest of it, they're coming after you. And that's what's happened to BlockFi. And that's why BlockFi has such low interest rates because they don't want to have any high ones out there because that is putting them in the sights of the SEC. The SEC could still come after them and they are just trying to hold it back. BlockFi, I think it's, I know it's in the US and I think it's might be like in New York or something like that, you know, in the most regulated sort of place. Could be wrong about that. I know they're an American company though. And that is why their interest rates are so low. Now, Celsius, on the other hand, they have an office in the US, but they're not from the US, hence why they're not so worried about the SEC. And it's all made sense. Like even Coinbase, and there's a lot of big money behind Coinbase, they can't offer these uh, high interest rate uh, crypto products because the SEC threatened them. And now I know that is what is happening to BlockFi because they are an American company. They don't want the SEC coming after them. And so... Yeah, that's why the interest rates are so low at BlockFi. And until regulation and all the rest of it comes, I don't see those prices going up. And that's really sad. I really like BlockFi. Uh, they were great for me and I'm still using them, but their interest rates are, you know, very low compared to Celsius. And I'm finally a member of Celsius. I'll put a link down below uh, in the future. I don't have it there at the moment. But Celsius are way outstripping uh, BlockFi but unfortunately they're at the mercy of the SEC at the moment because any kind of high interest the SEC just says nah that is uh, infringing on the old traditional finance system which the SEC is uh, all about and so they just won't have it and that is what is uh, stifling and preventing these companies from offering that I don't think it'll last forever. I think eventually they will have to bow because they will just see there's too much interest out there that can be made from other places and the old traditional finance will need to get on board with this stuff or they'll simply lose out. But I think regulation will have to come first. And, you know, again, it's really unfortunate for people who are in Coinbase. You know, it's great that your cryptos themselves are doing really well, but now you can't go and take any profits from that and earn any good interest on it either. They want you to not put it in uh, to banks and, you know, bonds and all the rest of it where it's paying basically nothing. All right, last but not least, here we go. The uh, president uh, has said, it appears the discount is ending. Thanks for the dip at IMF News. We saved a million in printed paper. El Salvador now holds 550 Bitcoin. So that is, uh, hopefully I say his name right, uh, Nayib Bukele. Well, Bukele, I'm not sure how to say that. Hopefully that was right. Uh, having a dig at the IMF because... The IMF were urging them not to adopt Bitcoin. There's a reason that the IMF have said that. And they've said that to a number of other countries. But we've got other countries, again, Panama and that. We went over here, Panama, looking to uh, allow it as a payment system. That's a little bit different to making it legal tender, though. 
But the El Salvador, they know. Whatever Bitcoin they buy now, yet the price may dump from here by 70%. But in four years' time, worth a whole lot more. In 10 years' time, most likely worth a bucket load more. And in 20, 30 years' time, we just don't know how high the ceiling is and how high it could go. But we don't have anything that is a fixed supply. Gold is not a fixed supply. Any metals that we have is not a fixed supply. The only other thing that we have that is fixed supply is land. We have a fixed supply of land. And even that's getting smaller sometimes. Uh, global you know, warming and all the rest of it. But you know, eventually they'll learn to sort of build land uh, in certain places. It might be floating land and things like that from water. But land and Bitcoin, they're the only two things that we have that are limited. And water actually. What an interesting time, hey? What a very interesting, interesting time. But, you know, good for El Salvador. And this is part of the reason, like, you know, again, the big players saw that it was being bought uh, and they were like, we're going to try and shake people out. And they're even, you know, big players are going to try and shake out El Salvador. They don't want El Salvador and El Salvadorians to have too much Bitcoin. They are actually hoping that they go and spend it because it's the big companies that are going to buy and hold it and they're just going to sell little bits back to uh, consumers for a lot more than they bought it for and then when it goes down in price again they'll just keep buying it up and that's it's a rinse and repeat cycle they'll buy it cheap sell it to you high wait to buy it back cheap sell it to you at high but keeping the majority of it hence why if you have bitcoin my personal opinion is you know just think twice about when you should sell it now, again, no one ever lost money making pro taking profits. So I'm not saying you can't ever take profits. But really, until we find out where Bitcoin is going, what's its ceiling? And I don't think we're at the ceiling yet. So again, personal opinion. Yeah, I just don't understand really selling it. So again, I'll sell a little bit here and there. But mostly, I'm just holding my Bitcoin. And, you know, the, the bulk of it, I will never sell. And you know, again, unless something sort of changes, that all of a sudden Bitcoin is not what we thought it was, and there's something better. And you know, some people say ETH, but I got a good stash of ETH. And same thing, I'll never sell it. I'll sell and trade some, and it'll be a, that way with any crypto that I can see over time. Just kind of continues to innovate and becomes worth more and more, and you know, has that uh, test of time. Unfortunately, a lot don't. All right, sorry, this has been a really long one. I've rambled on a little bit, but had a few things I wanted to get off my chest. Again, I, I truly believe this is market manipulation. It's not we're now into a bear market. Please don't get shaken out. You know, I love Bitcoin. I buy Bitcoin. I hold Bitcoin. I can't tell you to do the same, but I've done pretty well doing that. Uh, I've definitely changed my uh, trajectory for the long term. You know, not the short term yet, unfortunately. But my, my thesis is I'm buying Bitcoin and I'm holding Bitcoin. Uh, I'm buying Ether and I'm holding Ether for now. As long as ETH 2.0, you know, works out and all the rest of it, then it'll be the same. I'll buy it and hold it. They will be things that I just won't sell unless I can see something better that's come along. Until then, I can't see anything better. All right, that's it for me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but things have recovered a little bit. I think there might be a little bit more downside though. Uh, look for better buys. And I'll see you next time.